about archaeological evidence of ancient civilizations and also the spiritual use of various herbs in their human societies? Well, I think we really had to break that down into two questions because um, the ancients using various herbs uh, in all different forms of psychedelics uh, is a little bit different from uh, the evidence discovered about uh, the whole spirituality of the ancients. Um, you know, we have these notions in modern science and say, uh, well, Stonehenge took a thousand years to make, or, or the pyramids took forever with all these massive amount of uh, slaves. Uh, and there's no evidence to support any of that. Um, you can go to uh, Cusco or uh, Gobekli Tepe, or, or all these different places around the uh, globe where there's no explanation of how civilization actually, um, how they made these monuments and how they are aligned perfectly on different uh, uh, lines across the globe, where there's uh, latitude or longitude, and, and how these, uh, it is obvious that from around the world, uh, Graham Hancock's uh, explanations and discoveries into all these ancient pyramids around the world, from Central, South America, all, everywhere, that civilization had to uh, be communicating with each other. It's just obvious that, that you don't create the same sort of structures all over the globe without some sort of uh, uh, architect or central planning committee or, or something that, that happened and then you can look at these hieroglyphs and uh, from Egypt, uh, from everywhere else, and you see uh, images carved in stone that are 4,000 plus years old of helicopters, uh, of flying saucers, of different space vehicles, of uh, gods riding on uh, uh, chariots in the sky. It, you know, some of that can be uh, symbolism of something uh, greater, but not a helicopter, uh, not a an actual men sitting in uh, what is obviously crafts of some kind flying around. Uh, modern schools, uh, society in general, uh, worldwide, just totally discards all those things. They, they don't even want to bring it up or discuss it. It can't even be opened up for debate, otherwise you're a quack. Uh, but they're there, nonetheless. So do we say the ancients are, oh, they were just crazy. They just. Uh, somebody invented like a uh, da Vinci just started drawing a flying machine and they just thought they'd carve it into the, the stone. I, I don't think so. Uh, I think that's a, a sophomore way to look at uh, what they were actually doing. So was there an advanced civilization or civilizations before? Well, yeah, obvious. I mean, just look at uh, uh, the huge carvings along the uh, sides of, uh, all over in Peru. Uh, it's obvious somebody was telling us something and we probably should listen to them or at least try to figure out what they were trying to tell us uh, either to give us warnings, give us uh, insight in how to live, how, how all these things connect us together I think it's a mistake for us just to ignore them as we do in modern society. I think that brings up another good point when we were talking about the ancient herbs and how they go along. That you were saying something about connecting with something and somebody. Do you think that was used for connection purposes or what's your thoughts? Well, I, I, I think that part of that was part of your second question about uh, the herbs. It's obvious that, at least obvious to me and most people that have ever uh, explored the idea of ayahuasca or uh, various mushrooms, LSD, various sorts of psychedelic uh, experiences. I think it is a, uh, I think it's a mistake too to not take uh, ancient civilization seriously, whether as recently as uh, the Native Americans. Our people in Peru to this day, and other places in uh, Asia, and all over the world still, uh, that are uh, exclu mostly exclusive from the United States because we live in the, 
uh, even though we're a decadent, degraded society, or grow, going that way rather quickly, uh, we we've, we've set up these these false mental uh, pictures of who and what we are from uh, the day the the Pilgrims, the Puritans, landed uh, in North America. If we don't explore the potential of our minds and see different realities uh, that, that are easily available to us from these ancient teachings and their ancient rituals and, and exploring the self to go inward and instead of just outward, most people pray outward, and when you think of uh, the billion people that uh, are whatever that number may be, of uh, uh, Hindu people, for example, uh, meditate, the yogis. Uh, they, they search inward. Uh, or the same way with uh, Nasim Harriman and his research in quantum physics is that uh, from the smallest cells inside us are also identical and mirror the great expanse of the universe. So if we want to know what the universe is, we should first explore better ourselves before we can even contemplate anything else. There's a great segue into my next question is how do you think frequent frequencies change our molecular structure and just other parts of our body? Well, I think that's a, a fun question because anybody who's ever been uh, in a situation with somebody you care about, whether it's me and you as brothers or your spouse or a friend or doesn't matter. You're in a relationship with somebody and they irritate you. Or you're in a happy mood and they walk in irritated. You can instantly feel their irritation. It instantly changes your own vibe. And where does the word vibe come from? It's a vibration. It is a frequency. Yeah. And scientific studies have already proven that if, if I speak negatively to you, it changes the molecular structure of your personal water, and you're made up of water. There's no way that um, that we can even remotely discount uh, the whole notion that my vibrations that I'm sending off to you do not either make you happier or sad. If I am sad as your brother, it's going to make you very concerned and sad instantly. If somebody comes in here telling jokes and they're funny, it's going to make the whole room laugh. Uh, how does that happen? It happens because of their energy. And what is their energy? Energy is already proven to be a vibration. It is a wave. So everything is a wave. Everything is vibration. So we have to take, uh, and I think that goes back into the whole notion of uh, psychedelics is that it, it allows you to see things and feel things that you otherwise in a different reality that you don't possess in your normal everyday consciousness. Speaking of seeing things that aren't a part of your everyday reality of consciousness, how are you, uh, what about remote viewing, things of that nature? Well, that just goes into more of uh, things we don't understand about humanity. We have for instance, the CIA uh, did a mass, and it's all declassified, uh, recently declassified information about how uh, they were afraid that Russia and their psychic programs were going to get a uh, heads up on uh, the United States. And, of course, these laser physicists uh, started exploring the whole idea of remote viewing. Can I see what you were doing in Jefferson, Texas from here. Can I see what you put in your safe? Can I see what you wrote uh, in a letter? Can I see anything that you've done somewhere over there if I'm just sitting right here and close my eyes and imagine it? Well, the answer is 100% yes. I mean, they proved it. It's not anything even up for debate. It's something that happened. And, and they teach people how to do it right now. I mean, you can go online and there are tens of thousands of people. Some of them are probably quacks. Some of them really know what they're doing. Um, the power of the mind in the United States is 
and a lot of other places around the world is totally suppressed and not applauded and, and we don't challenge it. We don't challenge our, ourselves to understand that you are mostly water. Everything inside of you is mostly just space. Same thing that you're sitting on, same thing with everything. There are vibrations flowing through us now. Everything that is happening uh, that we can see is extremely limited in this tunnel vision. And if we had the ability, we could see that there is a million different things going on around us that we are not privy to because our senses are limited. So should we explore the ancients and, uh, and what they said uh, in all different religions, is that we should look inward, we should explore our minds uh, through psychedelics, we should expand our thoughts into how we can be telepathic and remote view. Now, all of those things just meld together and you can't find that in any one religion.